healing mind, body, and feelings. The Toronto Hypnotherapist In this video, I am going to explore some of the amazing studies done on the use of hypnosis to help those in need of pain control. Now please keep in mind that in terms of pain control, hypnosis is considered to be an evidence-based therapy. This means that the analgesic or pain-reducing effects significantly exceed the placebo effect, that is, the ability of hypnosis to relieve pain is not based on wishful thinking or the power of suggestion because it causes changes in the brain that scientists can measure. There is even quite a history to it. In the 1840s, Dr. James Esdale used hypnosis to perform over 300 major surgeries. By doing so, he reduced the death rate, which at the time hovered around 50% because of shock and other complications, to 5%. However, chloroform was invented during this period, and so rather than taking two to eight hours to prepare a patient, doctors began to use chloroform because it worked right away. Right now, there is a hospital at the University of Liege in Belgium where they have performed over 4,800 surgeries over the last 10 years using hypnosis to control the pain because hypnosis really works. So this field is well established, but then there is no pain until it is processed by the brain. And if we can stop it from being processed in the brain, then we can stop the pain. Now people who suffer from chronic pain, that is long-term pain that just will not go away or behave as it is supposed to, should first consult their physicians to make sure nothing more serious is at play. Then they really should find a hypnotherapist who has been trained in pain management techniques. Pain is meant to be a warning signal. You twist an ankle and the pain reminds you to take it easy. However, chronic pain is different because it does not provide any useful messages. In fact, the messages are counterproductive and the brain has programs like noise reducing filters that are supposed to reduce our awareness of chronic pain. So, if you are experiencing chronic pain, this means that yours are malfunctioning. And rather than seeking drugs to control it, which can have all sorts of unwanted side effects, from sluggishness to dependency issues, hypnosis can help to reset these chronic pain reducing filters. And you should at least consider hypnosis because it is not toxic and has no side effects. Now the first study I am going to examine was called Psychological Approaches During Conscious Sedation, Hypnosis versus Stress Reducing Strategies, a Perspective randomized study. Here, 60 patients who were going to have plastic surgery using local anesthetic and intravenous sedation were randomly placed into a control group where they were taught strategies for reducing stress or into the experimental group where they would receive hypnosis during the surgery. Now, they could request midazolam and alfentanil if needed, and their behavior was monitored by a psychologist before, during, and after surgery 
where their levels of anxiety and pain and feelings of being in control were recorded. Not only did the group using hypnosis require significantly lower levels of midazolam and alfentanil than the control group, they also reported experiencing significantly lower levels of pain and anxiety and a greater feeling of being in control during the entire process. Their vital signs were also found to be significantly more stable than those of the control group. The next study was called Use of Hypnosis Before and During Angioplasty. Here, 32 subjects were recruited. 16 were randomly assigned to be in the control group and 16 were hypnotized before they underwent an angioplasty. This is a procedure where a balloon is inserted into a vein and then inflated to help open the vein while the patient remains conscious and aware. This study found that the surgeons involved were able to keep the balloon inflated 25% longer with the hypnotized group. 44% of the control group also asked for more pain medication compared with only 13% of the hypnotized group. The next study was called FMRI Study of Hypnosis-Induced Analgesia. This paper reports on a study involving 13 healthy subjects who underwent functional magnetic resonance imaging of their brain while their left hand was subjected to a powerful and painful laser beam. The researchers found that there was a significant difference in the way their brains responded to pain while they were in a normal state compared to when they were in a state of hypnosis. In both the normal and the hypnotic state, the primary somasensory cortex, which is the area in the brain that first receives the pain signals, had a noticeable reaction to the pain. When the subjects were in a normal state, this led to a cascading effect on other parts of the brain involved in the perception of and reaction to the pain. However, when they were in a state of hypnosis, this cascading effect did not occur, and the other parts of the brain were not affected, thereby reducing the perception of the pain. This means that while in a state of hypnoanalgesia, the brain registers the pain, however, it does not pass these signals on to the other areas of the brain involved in perceiving, feeling, and reacting to the pain. The next study was called Functional Anatomy of Hypnotic Analgesia, a pet study of patients with fibromyalgia. In an attempt to understand what happens in the brain when a person is hypnotized and then given suggestions for pain relief, Subjects were recruited who were suffering from the painful condition of fibromyalgia. PET or positron emission tomography scans were then taken of their brains when they were resting and then when they were in a state of hypnotically induced analgesia. The subjects all reported experiencing less pain when they were in a state of hypnosis than they did when they were in a state of rest. The researchers also found that there were significant differences in the way the blood flowed through the brain in these two states. They found that during the hypnotically induced analgesia, the blood flow was bilaterally increased in the orbitofrontal and subcolosial cingulate
cortices, the right thalamus, and the left inferior parietal cortex, and was decreased bilaterally in the cingulate cortex. And this is just a real, fancy way of saying this study proved that hypnotic pain relief is real and hypnosis leads to real physical changes in the brain. The next study was called Migraine and Hypnotherapy. In this study, 47 subjects were recruited and asked to report the number and severity of migraines they had each month for one year. 23 subjects were treated with hypnosis and also taught self-hypnosis, and 24 were treated with the drug Semitol. At the end of the study, it was found that those who had been treated with hypnosis experienced significantly fewer blinding migraine attacks than did the medicated group. Furthermore, 10 of those who had been treated with hypnosis no longer experienced any migraines at all, compared to only three in the other group. So if you know someone suffering from chronic pain, you should send them the link to this video and tell them to find a hypnotist who has had specialized training in the use of hypnosis for pain control. And if you think they might be dependent on their medication, you should also know that hypnosis has been proven to be effective in helping people deal with substance abuse and addictions. Also note that any well-trained hypnotist will insist on a note from your physician stating that you have been thoroughly checked out to ensure that there is nothing more seriously wrong before we will work with you to reduce your pain. Please visit my website if you would like to learn more. If you are watching this on YouTube and found it helpful, please click like. If you wish to be informed when new videos are uploaded, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also love comments and will reply to yours.